morning if it's morning where you are if not hello and welcome it's morning here where i am we have a brand new skywatcher mount i saw this last night and i thought wow didn't know this one was coming and it seems to fit just below an eq5 size mount in terms of payload capacity but there's lots of interesting features on this so let's dive in and have a look it is the eq al 55i pro and it's a completely new design by the looks of things. It looks like they've got a whole new set of mouldings. Um, it's on the normal, I think, EQ5 mount. On this side, we have a bunch of connections, which we can see. So we've got a snap port. We've got a USB-C port, a power switch, and a little power connector there. I've not seen a mount yet which has a USB-C connector there. So that's quite an interesting feature. I'm not a big fan of that type of power connector, the little 5.5 millimeter center pin positive connector. It's fine. And in this scenario, it won't be moving. So the whole mount will move, but that bit won't move. So in theory, if you tie that off, that won't interrupt your power at all. But it's a plastic socket. Um, I think really nowadays it should be a metal socket something a bit more robust would be better one thing which I am interested in is the Wi-Fi and the huge Wi-Fi symbol that we have there so clearly this is a Wi-Fi enabled mount the other thing that I've noticed which I am very intrigued about is the fact that we have some teeth here on the latitude adjustment one of the things I found, because I buy most of my mounts secondhand, um, is that on the Skywatcher mounts they have a metal bar that sticks down and then they use a threaded bolt to push the angle of latitude up and then a locking one on the other side. And sometimes what you're meant to do is loosen the locking one completely, adjust your latitude and then very gently lock it off. Sometimes people forget to do that and as a result they adjust the latitude and it bends those bolts and then you have to somehow cut them out and replace them. This is different. This is a good thing. That means that this here is some kind of worm which is going to be adjusting the latitude and later on when we look at the specifications you will see that the latitude adjustment of this mount goes from zero degrees to 90 degrees. Those that live in areas near the equator will be able to adjust their mount to get it 100% polar aligned according to where they live, which is really useful. It of course eliminates the ability to bend this worm gear. I'm hoping from the looks of that circle there that that is a full support for that and that this will be a lovely piece of metal and not a plastic adjustment. It's hard to know where this mount sits. I've said it's sort of between an EQ5 Pro and a full-on HEQ5. But looking at those two weights there, we've got a smaller weight and a bigger weight, which is very typical of the EQ3 mounts. That's how my EQ3 is set up. These azimuth adjustments are just standard Skywatcher ones. They're a bit um, plasticky and the thread is too short, so you can't do really coarse adjustments on them. The locking mechanism for the right ascension is this star wheel which is common actually on a few of the skywatcher products and then we've got the typical uh, declination adjustment which is here that we're all familiar with from the skywatcher mounts so let's have a look at another photo this is a side view and you can see this is where it's basically adjusted fully horizontally so it comes down to that fact if you're near the equator you'd adjust it according to how your location sets so that demonstrates that aspect of it same view but on the other side we can see we've got two additional ports one of these is for a guide port for an st4 port and the other one is for your hand controller clearly they want you to use wi-fi with this mount um, because the wi-fi sign is branded on every photo that i've found so far this is a photo of it with the standard HEQ5 or EQ5 Pro mount that you can see there. Um, but it's quite an elegant looking mount from the looks of things. And finally, we have some interesting specs here. Now I'll zoom in a little bit. 
one thing which I find quite interesting about this, and I don't really understand this, they're not stepper motors. It says here, motor type, DC servo motors. Now it doesn't mention anything about stepper motors. I assumed that most mounts would be stepper motors because they're very accurate and you can slew exactly to where you want to be, but they are servo motors. Therefore, they should have a feedback as to their positioning. I'm not 100% sure of the accuracy of using servo motors instead of stepper motors, but I just wanted to point that out. It could be fine. It then talks again about the Wi-Fi function and the USB port being USB-C, the snap port, which is of course to take photos controlling a DSLR, and it has power and it has the hand controller and the auto guider port as well. It also has a built-in polar scope with LED illumination, which is the normal Skywatcher through the mount uh, polar scope. It says the counterweight shaft is adjustable. So you can see here on this one, it's on a different um, latitude position for the counterweight shaft at zero degrees. And then going up to 90 degrees, it has a lower position available. You can see the, the two, one hole there, and that one's obviously the one in use. They're making a big thing of using the um, the app. It does say that the hand controller here is optional, so I assume it is not going to come with a hand controller. So they're obviously wanting people to use the app, really pushing for the app. The weight is good, it's 3.7 kilos, it says there, with a payload capacity of 10 kilos. So for payload capacities, normally you would expect there to be a payload capacity for imaging and a payload capacity for observation. So I would suggest that Skywatcher are probably aiming this for the visual observer because they're really pushing the Wi-Fi connectivity on this. Because if you're imaging, the likelihood is you're going to be using a mini PC attached to your mount via a wire, which this can do. They're really pushing the Wi-Fi, which means you're probably going to sit with a mobile phone, finding your object and then slewing your mount to that object and then looking at it. So doing visual observation. Of course, as always, I could be completely wrong. I had a quick look on the internet to see what I could find. This uh, is First Light Optics page. Again, talking about high precision DC servo motors. The right ascension resolution is very good at 0.32 arc seconds. And then it talks about all of the other functions that we've mentioned. I'm just having a look to see if there's anything extra that I've missed there. Single axis tracking, I think that just means that when it's not being guided, it will um, only track on the right ascension, which is what you would expect. Uh, but if you're guided, it would be right ascension and declination. I did find another page here, which said the mount was a lot cheaper. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. But this one here doesn't have all of the go-to features. And it has some slow motion controls attached which means that they are thinking that this mount can be used just as a standalone mount without any form of go-to capability as well. So clearly they're trying to think about the different markets that are going to be using this particular mount. There we are, that's the new Skywatcher EQAL55i Pro mount, which I stumbled across last night and I thought you guys would be quite interested to learn about. Have a quick look on the internet, see if you can find anything else out and put it down in the comments, but it's good to see new products coming out from Skywatcher.